Greetings in our Savior's name. Welcome to our Good Friday Tenebrae service. We make our beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the reproaches, which I will chant, and then the congregation will respond with one verse of Lamb of God. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, all my people? Wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death, and you have delivered up your Redeemer to be scourged. I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, and you have nailed your Savior to the cross. O oh, my people,
graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. We pray through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the confession of our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, Stricken, Smitten, and Afflicted. together comes to us from John 19. They took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, 
which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two other men, one on either side, and Jesus in between. This far the text. My dear friends in Christ, in many ways we have glamorized the cross. We have cleaned it up, covered it in gold, silver, and jewels. We have made it into costume jewelry and decoration. In the midst of all that overlay, perhaps we have lost something of the meaning. Perhaps our efforts to make it beautiful have cost us to understand its depth, its sorrow, its price. If we truly want to understand the cross, we must look to the original one. We must set aside for this Good Friday moment crosses that are clean and gold, crosses that we hang from our necks and our ears. We must go back to the cross in all of its woodenness and all of its roughness. If we desire to know God's will at Golgotha, we must contemplate upon the cross in all its crudeness and all its cruelty. We must think on its earthiness and see its blood-stained wood. Yet even more than that, beyond the crudeness and earthiness of the cross, we must meditate upon the one who is upon it, the one who hangs there. We must see his sorrow, his pain, the unjustness of his death. We must see it as the will of everyone, the Romans, the Jews, you and I, and even God himself. It is the man upon the cross and the cruelness of his death that upon contemplation will give us the truth that Pilate looked for. If we meditate upon it, truly meditate upon it without excuse, without being afraid of what we will hear or see, then we will hear and see what we need to. And what will we hear is this, that to so many of things that our hearts and minds tell us, the cross says otherwise. The cross and the dead man upon it speaks and it says otherwise to what we often think to be true. The cross speaks to our own false securities, to those in the world who would believe and feel secure in thinking that God is good and does not really think so harshly upon sin, the cross says otherwise. God is indeed good, but he does not treat sin lightly. The cross tells us that we should not turn God into a doting grandfather who simply overlooks and doesn't care about sin, who just every, wants everyone to be happy and close. The cross says otherwise. Don't find security in a false caricature of God. The cross also speaks to those who of themselves are basically good people and who need to worry about the little things or what we perceive to be the little sins. Our goodness is never good enough. The cross and the God-man who dies upon it tells us that our goodness is not good enough. We often find a false security in believing that because in our own estimation, we are somewhat better than others who are truly bad, who are truly evil. Therefore, our sins, little as they are in our own minds, need not trouble us. But the cross says otherwise. The cross says this is the price of your sins. It is your sins that brought this God-man to this death, to this bloodshed, to this moment. This is the price of your sin. When you don't think of yourselves as so bad, the cross says otherwise. Of course, for many, the difficulties are not about false securities, about the opposite. For many people whose lives are filled with suffering, guilt, and all manner of brokenness, they have imagined that God has ceased to love them, or even to think of them. To them, the cross says otherwise. To them, the cross says how much God thinks of them, how deeply he loves them. He's willing to take his own son and put him to death on their behalf. He crucified his son that you might know you are loved and that you might live. He causes suffering in Jesus that your suffering might be understood. Whatever it is that you imagine you bear alone, the cross says otherwise. You have Christ, a high priest, who understands all your weakness, all your suffering. Hebrews tells us we do not have a high priest who cannot understand or sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who is tempted in all things, just as we are, and yet was without sin. Christ understands what it is you are facing, what it is you are suffering. And so when you believe you suffer alone, the cross says otherwise. 
Often it is not false security we have, but no security at all. Our sin looms so large, so numerous before our eyes, that we can't imagine having forgiveness. But the cross says otherwise. We, together with God, know the depths of our sin. We know our thoughts, we know our anger, our hate, our lust, our sloth, our ever-present sin, which is ever before our eyes. And we can't imagine being free of that guilt or burden. But the cross says otherwise. The cross and the man who dies upon it comes exactly for that purpose, that you would be forgiven. Here, your sin is atoned for. Here, your guilt is canceled. Here, at this cross, this cruel, crude cross, you have hope. As dark and sad as today is for the Christian church, the darkest day in our church calendar, there is also now, even in the midst of the darkness, a deep hope. Like that altar cross set against the background of soot and ashes at Notre Dame so many years ago as it burned, the crude cross of Christ stands to say something good, something hopeful, something forgiving to us. When we are lost and broken, guilty and sad, when we are not sure of our own worth, the cross says otherwise. This is what your God thinks of you. This is what your God would do for you. Here, your sins are paid for. Here, your brokenness is mended. Your guilt atoned for. Here, you are loved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We now move to the steps of Tenebrae. Why was Jesus killed? Many believe that it was the result of a political action, when an innocent traveling rabbi got caught in the crossfire between Jewish zealots and the powerful Roman army. Others say no, this was purely a religious dispute between the established temple hierarchy and a backcountry rabbi who sought to reform the faith to something more pious, something more basic. They reasoned that Je Jesus simply took on the wrong people, in a way, both positions are correct. Tonight, you will be allowed to take a look at the larger picture. In doing so, you will discover the real cause of the crucifixion, our sinfulness, and God's great and abundant love. Tonight, we observe the ancient order of the service called Tenebrae. The first reading, the decree of Augustus. And it came to pass in those days, that there went up a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. So Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of Bethlehem, to be taxed with his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth, forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. The Gathering of the Disciples Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Straight away they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who were in the boat, mending their nets. He called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat, and they followed him. And went again by the seaside, and passed by Matthew the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the place where the taxes were collected. Jesus said to him, Follow me. Matthew rose and followed him. He called unto himself his disciples, and he chose twelve whom he named apostles. Simon, whom he also called Peter, Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon called the Zealot, Judas the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. The Transfiguration Jesus took with him Peter and the brothers James and John and led them up on a high mountain where they were alone. As they looked on, a change came over Jesus. His face was shining like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. 
Then the three disciples saw Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. So Peter spoke up and said to Jesus, Lord, how good it is for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was talking, a shining cloud came over them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my own dear son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard the voice, they were so terrified that they threw themselves to the ground. Jesus came and said to them, Do not be afraid. So they looked up and saw no one but Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. The prophecy of his death. Jesus told the Jewish authorities, Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that the scriptures said, My zeal for your house burns in me like a fire. Then the Jewish authorities came back at him with a question. What miracle can you perform to show us that you have the right to do this? Jesus answered, Tear down this temple, and in three days I will build it up again. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple. Are you going to build it again in three days? But Jesus was speaking about his body. So when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scriptures and what Jesus had said. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Peter's Interference From that time on, Jesus began to speak plainly to his disciples. I must go to Jerusalem and suffer much from the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. I will be put to death, but three days later I will be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid it, Lord, that must never happen to you. Jesus turned around and said to Peter, Get away from me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my way. These thoughts of yours don't come from God, but from man. Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone, if anyone wants to come to me, he must forget himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his own life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. We continue with our hymn, Upon the Cross Extended, verses 1 through 3.
when they came near Jerusalem at the place where the road went down to the Mount of Olives. A large crowd of his disciples began to thank God and praise him in a loud voice for all the great things they had seen. God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Then some of the Pharisees in the crowd spoke to Jesus. Rabbi, command your disciples to be quiet. Jesus answered, I tell you that if they kept silent, the stones themselves will start shouting. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The deed of treachery. Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples. So Judas went off and spoke with the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard about how he could betray Jesus to them. They were pleased, and they offered to pay him money. Judas agreed to do it and started looking for a good chance to hand Jesus over to them, without the people knowing about it. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. The upper room with Jesus. Jesus said, One of you is going to betray me. The disciples began to murmur among themselves on who it could be. Judas said to Jesus, Surely, Rabbi, you don't mean me. Jesus answered, So you say. Jesus took a piece of bread, dipped it, and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as he took the bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Hurry and do what you must. Judas accepted the bread, went out, and it was night. While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave a prayer of thanksgiving, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks to God, and gave it to them. Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you the truth, I will never again drink this wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in my Father's kingdom. They sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We continue with Upon the Cross Extended, the next two verses. because many times Jesus had met there with his disciples. When he was at this place, he said to the disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John. Grief and anguish came over him, and he said to them, The sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went a little farther on. He threw himself face down on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, 
take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but thine be done. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. The arrest of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Look, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinful men. Get up, let us go. Here is the man who is betraying me. Jesus was still speaking when Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, and the chief priests and the elders were there. The traitor had given the crowd a signal. The man I kiss is the one you want. Arrest him. Judas went straight to Jesus and kissed him. Jesus replied, Judas, you betrayed the Son of Man with a kiss. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen, stepped forward and said, Who is it that you are seeking? He answered, Jesus of Nazareth. I am he, Jesus answered. And at once they all fell backward to the ground. Jesus asked them again, Who is it that you are seeking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. I have already told you that I am he, said Jesus. If then you are looking for me, let these others go. He said this so that his prophecy might come true. Father, I have not lost even one of those you gave me. Then they laid their hands upon him, and they took Jesus away. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. The trial before the high priest. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer to give to the accusation made against you? And yet Jesus kept quiet. Again the high priest spoke to him, In the name of the living God, I now put you under oath. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus answered him, So you say, but I tell all of you, from this time on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Almighty and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his clothes and said, Blasphemy! We do not need any more witnesses. You have just heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They all answered, He is guilty. He must die. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. We sing the last two verses of Upon the Cross Extended. Then I will let him go. 
Yet the whole crowd cried out, Kill him! Kill him! Pilate wanted to set Jesus free, and so he appealed to the crowd one more time. But they shouted back all the more vehemently, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them a third time, But what crime has he committed? I cannot find that he has done anything to deserve death. I will have him beaten and set free. They kept shouting at the top of their voices that Jesus should be crucified. Finally, their shouting succeeded. Pilate passed the sentence on Jesus that they requested. And they took Jesus away and led him to be crucified. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The death of the Son of God. With Jesus, they crucified two thieves, one on the right, the other on the left, with Jesus in between. The scriptures were fulfilled, which said he was numbered with the transgressors in his death. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. One of the thieves, which hung on the cross, hurled insults at him, saying, If you are the Christ, say yourself and us. But the other thief rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God? You are receiving the same sentence as he. Ours, however, is only right because we are getting what we deserve. But he has done no wrong. And he turned to Jesus and asked, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you that today you will be with me in paradise. When Jesus saw his mother, the disciple whom he loved, standing with her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Son, behold your mother. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After this, Jesus knew that all things were now accomplished. That the scriptures might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. Now there was a vessel there, full of vinegar. Someone ran and filled a sponge with vinegar and raised it to him. They put it on a pole, and they gave it to him to drink. When Jesus had received it, he said, It is finished. And then he cried out again with a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When he had said this, Jesus bowed his head and died. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The glorious step from Tenebrae. The next day, which was the Sabbath, the chief priests and the Pharisees met with Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that while that liar was still alive, he said, I will be raised to life in three days. Give orders then for his tomb to be carefully guarded unto the third day. So they left and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone, leaving guards to watch. As Sunday morning was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake, and an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled away the stone, and sat upon it. The guards were so afraid that they trembled and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is risen, just as he said. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world.
Let us pray. God the Father Almighty, who in eternal wisdom and mercy ordained that your Son should be the sacrifice for our sins, and who let him be punished for the iniquity of us all, grant us your peace. In this holy hour, when we ponder the salvation you have prepared for us, we thank and praise you for your mercy and grace. We worship you for the words of eternal life Jesus gave us, for his heavenly teaching, for his fulfillment of the law and the prophets, for his sacrificial love, for his perfect obedience, for his patience and suffering, for his willingness to endure even the cross, and for his submission even unto death. Heavenly Father, today as we remember our Savior's passion, teach us again those things that belong to our salvation. As we remember his suffering, make us ready to pass through many troubles to enter the kingdom of God. As we remember his wounds, equip us to cope with every painful struggle. As we remember his crucifixion, teach us to crucify our worthless passions and desires. As we remember his death, help us to be ready to place our spirit also into your hands. As we remember his burial, help us to remember that he has transformed the graves of all believers. We rejoice, O oh Father, that we have received your mercy and seen your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Give us your continuing grace through him who died and rose again for us, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray as we pray together in a whisper. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you of his eternal peace.